All right, guys, today we've got a pretty quick video. I'm just going to show you how to, uh, if you think you've got a vacuum leak at idle, how uh, you can determine that really quickly, just some quick OBD2 scan data that you can get out of pretty much any scan tool you got. So let's get into it. We've got this vehicle in here today. There's nothing wrong with this vehicle. It's coming in for some brake work, but we want to do a quick video. The 2007 Toyota Tundra 4.0. You can, this is any vehicle, any vehicle. OBD2, this is important to know that. I'll show you why. Uh, all I've done here is I've created a very small vacuum leak at idle. Okay, just a very small vacuum leak here. I mean, it's going to be a vacuum leak all the time, but all right, that's all I've done. So we see it's, it's pretty tiny. Let, let's come inside and let's see what the data looks like. All right. So all I've got is, this is OBD generic. I mean, we're using the, the um, ATS um, e-scan, but that's just a generic scan tool, guys. So it's got a lot of other good features in it, but I'm just looking at data from the generic part of it. So if we look at our short term, so we've got our short term bank one, short term bank two, long term bank one, long term bank two, okay? And if we look, we always want to add our, our fuel trims together. So always take your short term on bank one and your long term on bank one and add those together. So that's 20, what, 22, 23%. And then do the same thing on bank two. So bank two, about the same thing, four, bouncing around four and three, 18.7. And remember, our long term is just that. If we think about how this, this data, is, this fuel trims work, our long term is a, is a, it sees a, it sees an adjustment that needs to be made. It looks at short term, okay? And short term, if it goes high and it stays high for a while, then long term goes, okay, that looks like that's staying there. Let me keep watching it. It'll keep watching it, keep watching it. Short term's high. It wants to get short term down close to zero. It should be, you know, bouncing back and forth about zero. So as a module looks at that, it goes, it starts adjusting long term, okay, up to bring short term down or vice versa, depending on where short term is, okay? But it's trying to get short term to zero. So it's using long term to get short term close to zero, okay? So if we just go in and we pull up short term fuel trims and they look like they're good, let's say they're bouncing around zero, they're two, three, four percent, I would be okay with that. But you don't look at, at long term and you don't add that in there, you're gonna not be going down the right path. You're gonna be making wrong diagnostic decisions because all you're looking at is half of the fuel trim equation. So you have to use long-term and short fuel, your long-term and short-term and always add those two together for one bank and that's your total fuel trim on that one bank, okay? And we all know that should be somewhere, I mean, we should be somewhere five-ish percent. You know, we're okay with that, two, three, four, five, six percent. That's not gonna usually be an issue. Um, as close to zero as you possibly can be. So, but here's a quick, tr a, a quick tip here. We think, now we know we've got a, a vacuum leak on this vehicle, but let's just think, you got a vehicle that comes in, you think it's a vacuum leak, okay? So you pull up your fuel trims, you're like, well, I do have high fuel trims, my long term is now, you know, sitting up here, <clears throat> you know, 22%, you know, yeah, I'm bouncing around zero here, so we're in fuel control. This, this computer is controlling the fuel properly. There's, it's not gonna be running rich or anything, uh, we think it's running rich, but it's not really running rich. It is in fuel control, so the emissions is going to be good, okay? We just have high fuel trims. It's having to add a lot of fuel to, to maintain fuel control. So what we have to do now is go, okay, well, when is this running like this? So right now we're at idle, and it is uh, running at these fuel trims. Let's go ahead and take it up off idle and see what happens. Now we saw, because our, our short term, we, were, we were, had compensated for it, our short term popped up, and then we started dropping back down. Let's look at our long term now. Our long term sitting at seven, okay, plus the two-ish, so now we're at eight on bank one. On bank two, we're at 10 and zero, so now we're at 10, okay? So our fuel trims came down immediately. As soon as I, as soon as I gave it some gas and held it up there, sitting at about 2,000 RPM, 
those fuel trims started to come back down to normal. Okay, now let me let off. Now it's gonna pop back into the idle cell. And remember, these fuel trims work in cells. So it's popped into the idle cell. And here's our trims went right back up to the, to the high again. <clears throat> so we know that at idle is where it's having the issue. When we take it off of idle, again, do it again. Here's our 1900, 2000. Here they've dropped back down, okay? Short term still bouncing around zero, but our long term's way low. Well, not low, but I mean lower. Okay, we've dropped them in half, okay? But as soon as we lot off, gonna go back high again. And let this even out for a second, and there we go, okay? So that is 100% when you see that, when you see high fuel trims, at idle, and then you give it some gas, 2,000-ish RPM, 1,500, 2,000 RPM, and the fuel trims start coming back down towards zero, that is a vacuum leak, okay? Now, if you drive this thing down the road and you get it up to speed, and you, you're holding it up and it's running at 2,000 RPM, those fuel trims might be perfectly fine. It's only going to be at idle that you're going to see that vacuum leak in the fuel trims. It's not going to affect it going down the road. Throttle's open, and we don't have the, the uh, pressure in the intake manifold or the lack of pressure in the intake manifold like we do at, at idle with the, with the throttle plate closed. So this is a very quick and easy way to pick out a vacuum leak. So now let's go in. We're gonna take the, the tool with us. Okay, we're gonna set that up and I'm just gonna fix the vacuum leak. All right, vacuum leak. Just got plugged. Now look now. Now our short term is sitting at minus 18, 15, all right? A long term is gonna take longer to adjust. They're still sitting at 20, 22. Notice they haven't moved, okay? But look at our long, our short term. Our short term is trying to correct right now. It's trying to bring it back down. And as time goes on, that, that long term is gonna come back down. Make the vacuum leak again. Let's see what happens. There it goes. Short term bounced up. Fix the vacuum leak. Short term's dropping back down. Now this thing is gonna make adjustments and it's gonna be in different cells. So it's, you know, what we would normally do here is, uh, my recommendation is this. I'm gonna go ahead and fix this vacuum leak permanently now put it back in there. in there. Let me clamp that off. So here's the deal with fuel trims, especially long term. This thing is going to run through a bunch of cells. It's going to sit there and pop around. And a lot of people, as soon as this thing starts doing that, as soon as they fix one, they want to go ahead and, and clear the codes. They want to clear the adaptives or whatever. Don't do that. Don't do that. Find your vacuum leak. You know, you know it's an idle now. You know it's a, you know it's an idle fuel trim problem. You know it's a vacuum leak. So you go ahead and smoke it or whatever you use to determine a vacuum leak. You know, we would use smoke in the intake manifold is, is one of the best ways of doing it. Uh, some people will spray some carburetor cleaner, or whatever you got, propane, you can run around. But smoke just kind of gets you pinpointed in right on what's wrong with it. Um, but once you find it, once you fix it, don't clear everything, let it run. Let it run and let's make sure that everything is actually coming back down to where it needs to be on its own. It should all, you know, you might have a code. You might have, a, I'm, I'm trying to go over a pure memory here, um, it's PO 170 something code, uh, 174, 172, 174, something like that. Anyway, it'll be a lean fuel trim code. And you'll have that code, don't clear the code. Don't clear the code because on many cars you clear the code, you clear the adaptives. You wanna let that fuel trim, you wanna run it, drive it down the road, run it, let it idle and let those adapters come back down. If you see them coming back down to normal, if you see them fixing themselves, then you know you fixed the car, okay? Because a lot of times if you clear fuel trims, it might take a while for those things to actually start readapting and it, you may not know that you actually fixed the car. So we wanna know when we're done with it, we fixed it. So um, this one's gonna take a little bit cause it's gonna run through some different cells and stuff. It's doing some little bit of weird stuff. We're still sitting at 22, but we're sitting at zero. But we know, we, we, we know what happened here. We created the vacuum leak and we know what's going on with this car. 
So it's going to get, this Toyota is going to fix itself. Some things take, it could take quite a while before it fixes itself. It, it could take, um, it, before the fuel trims normalize. I mean, it could take, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes at idle. It might take more than that. It might take, you know, 10, 20 miles of driving. So depending on the vehicle, um, the, and like this one right here, honestly, looking at this one right here right now, you know, this one's a little weird because look, we're sitting at zero, we're sitting at 20, 22%, but we know we don't have a vacuum leak anymore. We fixed it. All right. So let's, uh, let's do this. Let's, let's, let's try something here. So this car has no codes, right? So let's go in. But all I did was pull that off real quick. Might have a pending now. Let's see if it's got a pending. Nope. So we're reading. It's got no codes. So go back over here. I would expect this right now, honestly, I would expect these two to be much higher than this or much lower than this to be a negative number trying to pull these back down. So this thing might be in a different kind of adaptive. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna shut it off, turn the key back on. Let's see what it does. Might have to shut it off. And hmm. All right, now let's let it normalize. Let's let it equalize out. So that would make way more sense to me. So for some reason on this Toyota, we had it running, we fixed the leak. It needed to have it cycled. So it needed the key cycled. Now we're going to correct. Now you're now if you look at it, you're at 14 long-term negative. That's a negative 14%. And and 16% positive on the long term. So short terms negative, 13, 14%. Long terms 14% positive. That's zero. You're bumping around zero. Same thing on on bank two. Short term negative 11%. Positive uh, on short term negative 11%. Long term positive 12, 13%. That's pretty much putting it one two percent. Perfect. So again, if we looked at this one and we saw all these negative numbers. If we didn't have the long term pulled up and you pulled this in and you went, well, this thing's pulling away a lot of fuel, I'm running rich. Well, no, add those together and it's not running rich. It's running perfect. It's got perfect fuel control and it's got zero fuel trim almost. So it's just a really quick, easy way. It's something I learned a long time ago um, on how to do a vacuum leak. High fuel trims at idle, give it some gas, fuel trim start normalizing, vacuum leak, that's it. Uh, doesn't do that then you got to get into something else mass airflow sensor you know other things a breathing problem something like that but um but yeah this is a good quick easy way to tell this stuff so i hope that helped really hope you liked the video if you did please give us a thumbs up hit that subscribe button it really helps the channel helps reach more people and get us out there um hit that notification bell if you want to get notified every time we put a video out uh, we hope you liked it we'll see you in the next one